So you wrote and directed and produced, and the, you were the leading man as well in the film. Um, that must have been pretty exhausting to wear so many hats. How did you manage to juggle it all? This was, this was terrifying. Uh, the whole Once I decided that I was going to act in the film, and this was long after I had the original story idea, um, long after I started developing the project, we had started casting the movie, and it just, it, 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 became very evident to me how hard it was going to be to find someone who could bring severe mental illness to life authentically with realism as an actor and find someone who not only could do that, but who also was going to be credible on screen as a martial artist with years of experience, an amateur fighter becoming a professional fighter. I couldn't find that person, you know, and I happened to have that experience on the MMA side myself and through all of the you know the years of research I had done writing this movie and preparing to direct this movie um, I had the distinct fortune that my father who's a judge in criminal court uh, in Miami at the time was in juvenile court I was able to really immerse myself in the world of this character and that gave me the context that I needed the exposure that I needed to bring it to life authentically and once we started shooting the <laughs> The challenge of acting in 112 of 120 scenes while I was supposed to be directing the movie as well. I mean, it was, it was something that gave me a lot of sleepless nights in advance. And um, I, I don't think it, it wouldn't have been possible if not for two things. Um, the first thing was that I also wrote the movie. If I hadn't written the movie, which gave me both the, the research and the preparation to act and to direct the movie, if I hadn't done that, it would have been impossible. And then the other really foundational pillar was my producing partner, um, Diomedes Raul Bermudez, who was so critical, not just in developing the script with me, reading every single draft, having so much feedback, helping me really shape it, but also on set being a set of eyes for me. We, would, we had this workflow that we did in advance where we said, okay, let's, we're going to go through the script. And anytime we're about to shoot a scene, we're going to have a very clear idea between us of what my objective was in that scene and what I had to accomplish from a performance standpoint. And if he felt as he was watching behind the camera um, that I wasn't doing that, he would tell me. And I, I had 100% trust in him. And um, thankfully that workflow allowed us to make the movie, get great performances throughout and, and keep it on the vision that I had for how it should feel and how it should develop. And um, I think we achieved it. You did. Um, and also your character Alonso suffers from multiple personality disorder. How far did you go in your research to make the character so authentic? I mean, I touched on it in my last answer and I'll expand on it here because this was such a foundational part of the research process to make this movie. Um, at the time that I was writing it, my dad was a judge in a uh, circuit court judge in Miami-Dade County in juvenile court, um, which is also known as family court. And every case that goes through family court involves the claim of child abuse, child abandonment, and child neglect. And, um, you know, as he was t talking to uh, myself and my siblings about just the cases that he was seeing, it's like really some of the most heartbreaking and tragic stuff you can imagine, because these are kids who are just stuck in really abusive, toxic situations through no fault of their own. You know, they're just, it just happens to be what they're born into. And a lot of times um, these are poverty stricken families. These are families dealing with mental illness. These are families dealing with drug addiction. And these are kids who are just caught in the crossfire. And a lot of times these kids not only um, get stuck in this system, the criminal justice system, um, but they also start developing mental illnesses as a result of the trauma that they endured um, in their childhood and working very closely with the court appointed therapist who was working in that courthouse, Judy Passos, who became a consultant and an advisor on our movie, um, and then going and spending time at the halfway houses um, with the peer counselors, with people in the prison diversion program, which is this pioneering program that we reference in the movie, which is uh, in Miami trying to give people who are mentally ill, but have, who have committed crimes, a different form of treatment and rehabilitation than the non-mentally ill criminal public gets when they go into the criminal justice system. So it was just a process of being 
just humbling myself and saying, I don't know anything, you know, I have to approach this as a blank slate and really just try and absorb all the realism of this so I can put at minimum the emotional truth of this character's struggle on screen. Yeah, I mean, you do, um, you touch on his backstory as a catalyst for his illness um, and it makes it more authentic to, you know, you have this character and you don't just see him as this, you know, this, had an unstable person there is a, a reason there how important was it to be able to show what was his trigger i felt if i wasn't able to illustrate that and, and if i wasn't able to do it authentically with realism i felt like the movie would fail you know it would be a failure in that like regardless of what the reception to it was i just felt like it would be a failure because my goal was to depict it with realism for the first time i felt like no one had done it so i felt i really especially once i got close to it and i got close to people who suffer from it and the people that work in the system and the people who have to go through it themselves it was like it was it became so real to me that i just i really felt the weight of that responsibility to render it authentically you know and just the the dilemma of being in that situation because uh, multiple personality disorder, which clinically is known as dissociative identity disorder, because it's a trauma-based illness, um, this isn't an illness that anyone can develop that uh, is embedded in your genetic code. You had to experience a traumatic event so severe in your childhood that your brain as a defense mechanism splits and creates this other personality as a response to the trauma. And at the same time, it takes that, um, that memory of the traumatic event and hides it in your long-term memory bank. And so unless you've been through the form of intensive therapy that we show in Huracan, um, this pioneering form of therapy we showed is called EMDR. And it's the first time it's actually ever been shown in a movie. Unless you've been through that form of therapy and you suffer from this illness, you're not going to know what gave you the illness in the first place and for me showing that was foundational you know to the point of even making this movie so that just as an average person who's lucky enough to not suffer from that illness you could watch this film and at least like hopefully be entertained and thought provoked you know what i'm saying and have this interesting different ex cinematic experience but ideally you're also gaining a level of empathy for people who are dealing with mental illness and struggling with their mental health. Okay. Yeah, and obviously the film, it also covers uh, MMA fighting as well. Um, and you also have the UFC star, now forgive me if I don't say this right, Jorge Masvidal in, in, in the, who uh, appears in it as well. How did that come about getting him on board? <laughs> this is one of the craziest things that happened in the course of the movie. You know, we, uh, I'm from Miami. So Jorge Masvidal, UFC superstar, the BMF, champion um he's from miami and at the time we were shooting this movie in early 2018 um jorge was in my opinion the greatest fighter uh boxer mma whatever the greatest fighter ever from miami and so authentic he grew up fighting in backyards in, with kimbo slice bare knuckle brawling you can watch those videos on youtube he's the real fucking deal and so for me at that point even though he was only really well known in the MMA circles in early 2018. I knew he has so much authenticity. He's the real deal. If I can get this guy in my movie, like it's going to add so much. And just as a fan, I really wanted the experience of being able to work with this guy. And I was so lucky that at KO zone, um, the gym where we shot our movie in Miami in little Haiti, which is run by Diego de Vera, um, his Muay Thai coach, Gregory Choplar, who plays the coach, Coach Kante in the movie, um, he was Jorge's Muay Thai coach at that time. And he was in training camp for a fight at Madison Square Garden. And that's where Jorge and I first met. It was while he was in training camp. And, you know, I think he gave me some tests to see if I was, you know, a bullshit artist, actor from Hollywood, or if I was a real person, like a real Miami guy. And, you know, he challenged me to come 5 a.m. to run over the Rickenbacker Causeway, to show up 5 a.m. in Little Haiti and do his pool workouts, you know, doing his cardio workouts with him. That was kind of, he gave me this opportunity to spend some time with him and see what his training camp was like. And I think he was also looking to see, is there any reason for me to respect this person, you know? And I think I did ultimately earn his respect. And um, 
even the, you know even though he's not the star of this movie he saw an opportunity to champion a miami film a film that um, is, is attempting to shed light on a really important and difficult topic of conversation especially amongst the latino community of mental illness toxic machismo um and we've had the incredible fortune that in the, in the time since we made our film, since we shot it, he's exploded into superstardom as one of the most popular fighters on the planet. And um, that's one of those things you just can't account for. And uh, we're just very lucky in that respect. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Thank